Okay, let us discuss this problem. This is a quite good problem. So this says propylene oxide is a chiral molecule. Hydrolysis of propylene oxide gives propylene glycol another chiral molecule. Draw the enantiomer of propylene oxide. So part A says draw the structure of enantiomer of propylene oxide. So you have to write enantiomer of propylene oxide so you have to draw the structure of enantiomer so how will you proceed so propylene oxide is first write on the a structural formula of propylene oxide and then you can proceed so you have CH2 O CH CH3 this molecule is propylene oxide now if you see this carbon, this carbon is connected to four different groups. So this carbon is basically a chiral carbon. Are you getting? Now let us try to write the two enantiomeric form of this molecule. You can use dash and base formula. You can use dash and base to show the structure of two, uh, two enantiomer of this compound. Let us put oxygen on the top. So I can have one structure goes like this. OCH2 and then here you have carbon let us take in one case CH3 is up so we have CH3 and 1H CH3 is upside and hydrogen is the downside so this is one molecule and the second molecule we will have that is a mirror image of the same so if they make this mirror image of this compound you will get the second one so here you have CH2 and here you have carbon and now this carbon the this side will have CH3 and this side we will have hydrogen so these are two guys in enantiomer if want you can also name this whether it's R or S so let us find this one so this is hydrogen in the back side and that's why purposely I have written hydrogen in the back side now this is 1 because it is right to oxygen, this is 2 and this is 3. So we will have hydrogen in the back side, so this is 1, 2, 3, so this is something like S. Are you getting? So this configuration, the carbon is, so this is anti-clockwise, so this is S. Now let us check for this. Oxygen is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3. So this is clockwise, so this is R. So these two are structures of two enantiomeric form of propylene oxide, one is S, another is R. In this case, this is clockwise, in this case, this is anti-clockwise. So you see this is a 1, 2, 3, so this is a clockwise. Clockwise is R. If clock goes right, then we have a right, conf so we can uh, use this analogy. If clock goes right, the name is R. Now B part C is give the mechanism for acid catalyzed hydrolysis of pure R propylene oxides what we are doing is we are taking this one R propylene oxide so this is R hydrogen is in the back side and then you have CH3 here and then you have CH2 what will be the product if this compound is treated with H plus in the presence of H2O uh, what will be the product? You can write yourself. So hydrolysis of propylene oxide in the presence of acid. So this is acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Are you getting? If you want, you can write this is the acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Acid catalyzed hydrolysis. So what will be the product in this case? I think all of you can do this one because we have discussed in the lectures. There is lone pair also. So let us write the product. I have been waiting for some time. So if you write product in this case, what will happen? This oxygen takes H plus. So I am making so this oxygen takes H plus from here 
so you will have O plus OH plus and this side you will have CH2 this side you will have carbon and hydrogen in the bottom side and this CH3 is the front side now we have two options so you see either I can attack on this or I can if I attack on this carbocation that is formed is secondary this is primary so basically as two molecule in the next step will attack on this carbon and this will attack from the bottom side and this will go up again so this case what will happen because this is this side aesthetically hindered so this will attack from the bottom side if it attacks from the bottom 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 side what will happen this will these two groups will go up so this will go slightly up this will also go slightly up so I can write a structure of the product so this side will have CH2OH so this side is okay CH2OH this carbon is not chiral now if you see this carbon now this OH will come in the bottom and this hydrogen will go up and this CH3 will go here now let us find the configuration of this carbon still this carbon is a chiral carbon now if you see the structure the chirality of this carbon what is the configuration 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so this is 1 2 3 this is uh, I think this either R or S so let us check so this is uh, anti-clockwise are you getting so anti-clockwise is S so configuration of this is S you can check yourself so this is anti-clockwise 1 2 3 so this goes something like this so this is anti-clockwise anti-clockwise yes so this means you should take R and if you take so this because we have taken R so you see here so this is the R configuration so if you take R and you do acid catalyzed hydrolysis the final glycol so this is CH2OH this side also COH so adjacent carbon contains OH group these are called glycols so glycols in this case the glycol I am getting that is a S glycol now the same question says part B uh, part C this time now this says give the mechanism of base catalyzed hydrolysis of R propylene oxide so again we are taking R isomer of the propylene oxide R CH2 O CH2 C and here I have CH3 that is the front and hydrogen in the back now if I, this is treated with OH minus in the presence of H2 what will be the product you can try yourself I am waiting for some time so you see in this case OH minus can act as a nucleophile and our reaction is just two like it can attack here or it can attack here this side is typically hindered so this OH minus this time will attack on this carbon primary carbon this is a 2 like mechanism so H minus is basically going to attack on this carbon if attacks on this carbon I have to open this side and if I write the product what we will have so this carbon is not disturbed so configuration so initial configuration of this is R configuration of this carbon rem will remain same as it was before so you will have hydrogen and here you have CH3 <coughs> here you will have OH O minus and if I take H plus from water I am writing the final answer you will have O minus and O minus can take H plus from water then finally I can put OH and here I will have CH2 and this OH is here so OH now if you see this carbon is now this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 so this is uh, clockwise so clockwise is R so you see in case of acid catalyzed hydrolysis of epoxide or propylene oxide the R isomer gives R are you getting or not? so this is an important point in case of acid catalyzed hydrolysis inversion takes place in case of base catalyzed catalysis base catalyzed uh, hydrolysis retention takes place are you getting a uh, D part of the question says 
product from the acid catalyzed hydrolysis this is the product so let us call this as a a and product from base catalyzed hydrolysis that is b so question says why a and b have opposite optical rotation so question d part says explain why the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of optically active propylene oxide gives a product with rotation opposite that of the product of base catalyzed hydrolysis so why a and b have opposite rotation that is very obvious because these, these two compounds are, are basically same compound ch2oh ch2oh ch ch3 ch ch3oh so both compound have same formula but only thing is configuration of this carbon is reversed and that's why they have a and b have different optical rotation a and b are enantiomer because that one carbon we have configuration change this carbon is not optically active so that's why if you are and there you, there you will have s so this means a and b are enantiomer and everybody knows enantiomer have optical rotation equal and opposite and that's why these two compound will have equal and opposite rotation we'll discuss the next problem this is a quite good problem you can revise this problem even at the time of exam also so you can make a star in your copy if you wish we'll discuss the next problem